So here's all you need to know about understanding Marvel's movie rights. The Marvel series of comic books has been around a long time. There's a lot of characters, there's a lot of stories, and they all intertwine. But unfortunately, the movies that are now coming out cannot intertwine. Right now, we've got a new Spider-Man movie out, we've got Captain America still in theaters, and we have an X-Men movie about to hit theaters. But there is no way that they can cross over. In the comic books, they crossed over all the time. Spider-Man was a member of the Avengers for a long, long time. Wolverine was also a member of the Avengers, but we will never see this on screen. Let's go back in time. Before Marvel was creating its own movies, before Iron Man, they sold the rights to their movies to other studios. Around the year 2000, they knew that they couldn't make a Spider-Man movie, so they sold the rights to Sony. They knew that they couldn't make an X-Men movie, so they sold the rights to 20th Century Fox. A lot of other deals were made. You remember there was a Daredevil movie, there was uh, Ghost Rider, Punisher. A lot of studios were making a lot of movies, but Marvel made none of these. So now, some of these contracts are still in effect. 20th Century Fox is still making X-Men movies. Sony is still making Spider-Man movies. But everything else that hasn't been used is basically reverting back to Marvel. So to make this understandable, I'm going to go over those three big studios and what they control and what we're missing out on. So let's start with Sony. In the year 2000, we got the very first Spider-Man movie, Tobey Maguire. We had three Spider-Man movies, then they rebooted and started over with Andrew Garfield, and then we've gotten two more. So five Spider-Man movies still under the control of Sony. And it doesn't look like they're going to stop making these movies because there's already a Spider-Man 3 and 4 and a spin-off for the character Venom, which could be amazing or could be horrible, and a movie planned for the villainous group called the Sinister Six, which in another video I'll cover who I think those Sinister Six are going to be and why that could be amazing or could be horrible. So they're trying to create their own extended universe with all of these characters, similar to what Marvel has done. So now let's talk about 20th Century Fox. There has been six X-Men movies, including the two that were just for Wolverine. So they're still making them, and they still plan on making more. There's another Wolverine solo film in the works, as well as another X-Men movie to follow Days of Future Past called X-Men Apocalypse, as well as potentially other spin-offs for other characters. So they are not slowing down, so as long as they make money, they're going to still be making X-Men movies. So in these contracts, I'm sure that there's a magic number that is how long they have to go without making progress on a film before the rights revert back to Marvel. It's a common theory that the movie X-Men Origins Wolverine was made just to restart that clock so that they would keep the rights. I'm not the only one that believes that. So when you have the rights to the X-Men, you also have the rights to the word mutant, which is why some characters in the Avengers uh, that are about to show up, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, they are mutants, but Marvel cannot even use the term mutant because 20th Century Fox has the rights to that. So that's why in the post credit scene of Captain America the Winter Soldier, they refer to them as miracles, not mutants. Also with the X-Men rights comes the rights to every spin-off group that has ever occurred, which includes the group called X-Force, which is currently either in the works to be a television show for Fox or a standalone movie. I'm going to be doing another video soon on X-Force, who that includes, and why that could be awesome. Now, the characters of Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. These are two, some of the only two, characters that overlap contracts. So Quicksilver, for example, is in this upcoming summer's X-Men Days of Future Past. He is also in Avengers 2 Age of Ultron. Two separate actors, two separate stories, but the same character. His sister, Scarlet Witch, is also one of those things. They were X-Men, they were mutants, but they were also Avengers for a long, long time, and some of their most central storylines were as Avengers. So both of these contracts include the rights to use them. In addition to X-Men, Fox also has the rights to the Fantastic Four, which they had two movies a long time ago, and it's been a while, so I'm not sure why the rights haven't reverted back, so I guess they must be making enough progress to hold on to that contract. Uh, but we had two movies, and we've taken a, a pause, and now they're rebooting it. They've just announced the cast. They're going to begin shooting soon. 
and so we'll likely see at least a trilogy of movies that include the Fantastic Four. This includes their villain Galactus, which has often faced off against the Avengers, but we'll never see that, and his sidekick, and then becomes his rival, the Silver Surfer. Both of these are included in the rights to Fantastic Four. Now, something confusing about Sony and 20th Century Fox. At the end of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, there is a mid credit scene that is a clip from X-Men Days of Future Past. Some people without knowledge might think that now these worlds are connected. That Mystique and this crazy little scene that she has is somehow in the world of Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, but this is not the case. Director Mark Webb, who directed the first Spider-Man and then this Spider-Man and likely some other Spider-Man, uh, he was in a contract, uh, he was in a contract with 20th Century Fox. He backed out for some reason and one of the one of the clauses in that contract was that he would do some marketing for X-Men Days of Future Past uh, in order for him to direct these Spider-Man movies. So as part of that deal, he said, sure, in Spider-Man, I'll show a clip of X-Men. All right, we'll just throw it in in the credits. People will go crazy. It's confusing, misleading, and the scene is not even good. I saw it, and I was not any more excited for X-Men than I was before. If anything, the scene was poorly edited, did not make sense, and just generally a waste of time. So, that scene does not mean that the worlds are now combined, it just means that Mark Webb backed out of a deal and this is something he had to do. Alright, and now we get to Marvel Studios, which was created with their very first film, Iron Man. Since Iron Man, all of those movies that they've made, Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Thor, Captain America, uh, all the other characters that showed up in the Avengers, Hawkeye, Black Widow, they have rights to all those characters. And all of those movies exist in the same universe. It's called the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that means that Iron Man knows what happened in The Incredible Hulk, that they exist in the same world. They're really the first people to do this, and now everyone is trying to copy them. That's why Spider-Man is trying to say, let's create a whole world. Let's have spin-off movies where they all exist together. Now X-Men is trying to do that. Maybe X-Men and the Fantastic Four, since they're both owned by 20th Century Fox, could coexist in the same universe. Should we? Could we? Should we is probably the better question. Marvel also has the rights to all sorts of other comic book franchises that have never been on the big screen. One of these includes a team called the Defenders, which includes Daredevil, whose rights reverted back to Marvel after the bit of a flop starring Ben Affleck. And to be honest, I didn't really mind Daredevil. I kind of liked it. And now you've unsubscribed. The Defenders is going to be a straight to Netflix series. Uh, there's going to be four mini series about four different characters and then a culmination movie, which is going to bring them together similar to what worked with the Avengers. I will be doing a video. I know I've said this a thousand times. I'm going to be doing a video on these four characters, who they are, why they're awesome and why going straight to Netflix could be a really cool move. Other Marvel properties that they sold their rights to, such as Punisher, Ghost Rider, most of those have reverted back to Marvel, so someday we may see another Punisher movie that exists in the same world as Iron Man, as the Incredible Hulk, as all of these characters, which could be awesome. So as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, when the Defenders are in New York City protecting its people, they can reference the attack on New York that happened in the Avengers. That these movies are all connected. But the Defenders won't mention Spider-Man, who just protected New York, because they don't exist in the same universe. The Marvel Cinematic Universe also includes the television show Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So we're talking Netflix exclusives, we're talking TV shows, we're talking movies, and all of them intertwine. It's a genius, genius idea. So what are some of these other things that we're missing out on? Because of these contracts, what moments are we never going to get to see? One of these, one of the big ones, is Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. In the Avengers, they're going to show up. But their father is Magneto. And that's a big part of who they are and their stories. But because Magneto is tied to X-Men, which is owned by 20th Century Fox, we'll never see that side of it. We can't even call them mutants. In World War II, Captain America served alongside of Wolverine. How cool would that be? Never gonna see it. Some of the most intense battles ever are between the indestructible Wolverine and the unstoppable Hulk. We'll never see it. 
Except on cartoons, streaming now on Netflix, check it out. Spider-Man was not only a member of the Avengers, but he was also a member of the Fantastic Four. And we will not see either of those happen. So what will it take to fix all this? The only way this will be fixed is when these other studios stop making money. Sony could make Spider-Man movies until the end of time. But until they realize it'd be better for us to sell it back than to make more. And that's not going to happen. They're already planning so many movies. 20th Century Fox is going to keep X-Men. It's going to keep Fantastic Four until they stop making money. So this is a shame because there's so many moments, there's so many cool things that could happen, but we're not going to see them. So it's going to be a while. And that sucks for us fans that we're never going to see the Avengers, including Spider-Man, including Wolverine, taking on Galactus. We'll never see it. So it's a bummer, but that's why. And now you understand a little bit more about these movie rights and why it's so complicated and why it's hurting us fans. To see other videos and to read other articles, check out I'mYourTargetDemographic.com. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped.